I paid a total of £65 for a Nintendo Switch console that has no power. On the listing specifically, it looks like it's in great condition, which gives me hope. But I find it's always the ones that look good have the worst faults. Let's head over to the desk and see if we can fix it. Wish me luck. I purchased this switch for £65, so I think, we, I think we're talking about $80 to $85 off the top of my head, that could be wrong. The listing states that it's in pretty decent condition, which it is, we'll have a look at that in a second, but it doesn't power on. It's been sealed up quite nicely, okay, we can see from the back that there's hardly any scratches, I don't think I can see one single scratch on the back, which is nice. Stand seems a bit flimsy, but that's okay, they normally are. The screen, wow. Pretty decent as well. The rails look like they've had some use to them, which is fine, I guess. Okay, I see some purpley pink stuff here. I don't know if that's maybe water damage. We will find out soon enough. The charging port looks like it's been walloped out of the universe, as you can see. There is a slight bend in the top bit there. So maybe we're talking charging port issues. First of all, let's see if it turns on by pressing the power button. Nothing. So we're gonna grab our little ammeter and we're gonna see how much charge this is pulling. Are we ready? This little device here should give me an indication of what's wrong with the device. I'm just gonna plug it in now. Oh, we get absolutely nothing. I had one of these recently and when I removed the charging port, all the pads came off with it. So I am skeptical about removing the port off this one. I don't want that to happen again. <laughs> I'll test it the other way around as well, just to make sure. Yeah, we get nothing on either side. So my thought process is that the pads are gonna be ripped underneath. But let's not dwell, let's take it apart. The bad news is that this has been opened before, so I haven't tried to remove the heatsink yet, but when I do, A, it's very loose, I've just taken out the screws, but pads have already been ripped. So on a Nintendo Switch, you have this pad here and this pad here, and they've both been ripped, which would imply that somebody's taken it off before. That's not good. And I can also see here that the water indicator is pink and also the fact there is flux on these chips but we'll have a look at that under the scope in a bit more detail in a second first things first get all the leftover thermal paste off so that we don't get messy let's take it under the scope this is what we're looking at okay so first off port are you a little bit wiggly a tiny bit wiggly you can see it's just moving a little bit side to side there okay so not not horrendous we've got all of the uh all of the pads here which is nice how we look in around here we've got the water indicator water damage indicator i'm just going to take that off real quick we don't need you anymore it looks a little bit pink and do you know what yeah this is flux this here look someone's definitely been in this before ebay seller why you lie it's flux all around here let's check m92 and see what's going on what is all this white stuff around it you see there's like white stuff around m92 up here not so much around here or here that might be because of the shadow though but there doesn't look to be any solder on these pads let's just inspect this a little bit more so yeah you can see there's hardly any solder on those pads whatsoever i don't know what that white stuff is maybe dried up flux or something but we have it on these caps here as well you can see around here let's rotate the board a little bit this way how's this side of uh, m92 looking again not a lot of solder that yeah that's okay again could do with more solder though on the uh, on the pads and that side looks fine so m92 could definitely be a culprit i'm just going to quickly check p13 and see what the status of this is this looks fine that actually looks untouched that looks factory that that p13 i don't think the port's been changed but you can see here look so you can see how it's coming apart i'm really scared that this is just going to rip all the pads rest of the board doesn't seem to be any flux or liquid damage or anything like that so i feel pretty good about that lcd connector etc looks okay how does everything around bq look yeah, it looks fine to be honest. Doesn't look like there's been anything touched. I think firstly we need to get rid of the port. Once I get rid of the port, I can do some initial testing, but I need to get this off first. Checking inside the port. Doesn't look horrendous at all. Quite dirty though. And like I said, rather loose. So I'd rather just get that off. We're going to apply some low melt here where I've just dropped some flux. Hopefully this will ensure that the pads don't get ripped, but I could be wrong. Areas on the back as well quickly. Right, let's get the port off. We're going in with a temperature on the Aton hot air station of 460 degrees Celsius as an airflow speed of 80%. And would you look at that, we have pulled pads. These ones here, look, this whole, almost the whole row. One of those things, it kind of looked like a good pull. I guess maybe the only thing that I could try is, is try supporting the port when it's falling off. But I would have thought that when you're, when you're pulling the port off, and it just falls off, then surely the, the solder is melted across everything, you know? But also maybe putting the um, the low melt solder might have not been that great because you can see this whole row here at the top is fine. 
but the second row, not so good, which is the one underneath, which is where you can't apply the low melt solder. Maybe we have a scenario like this again, I'm gonna try it without applying the low melt solder. Now I have to find out where each of these go. This one, I don't know if it goes to here or if it connects to this little vire that's just below it. I think it's the vire. Yeah, it's a vire, it's not going to that pad. The three on the end, I have no idea. Yeah, not great. <laughs> not great at all. I'm gonna have to attempt this sooner rather than later, aren't I? So let's clean up everything first. I think it's safe to say that that is definitely as clean as we're gonna get front and back. Look, now we need to run jumper traces from each one of these. I think this one is actually ground. But I think we've got a little via here, a little via here. That one goes to that pad. We've got a little via here, via here, via here, via here. I'm just gonna expose each one as best as I can. This is gonna be a slow and painstaking process. My method of madness is as follows. I'm gonna tin all of these pads up on the top row. Then my first thing that I'm gonna do is, let me get a smaller pokey item, here we go. Pokey item, we'll go with that. What I'm gonna do is this pad here, I'm gonna to connect to here, and this pad here, I'm gonna to connect to here. Once I've connected those two pads, then we're gonna attempt probably these little two on the side, and then we'll go for the rest of them. That could massively change depending on how much I mess this up. Wish me luck, I'm very nervous. I've never done anything on this sort of magnitude at all. How many traces is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine traces, I'm leaving this one because it's ground. Wish me luck, let's go. I start by applying flux and tinning the wires. Once I was happy that the wire was secure, I was then using a crafting knife to cut the loose wire. I was trying to clean as much as I could on the go whilst doing this, and also wanted to ensure that all the wires were gonna be in the correct places. And here whilst I was cleaning, I lost trace number three. As annoying and as frustrating as this looks, once you got into the rhythm, it was actually okay. I then applied solder mask and cured it with a UV pen, both in the middle and at the bottom of the board. Now it's time to tin the wires. However, here we lost another Conrad. I had to scrape back the solder mask and reapply this little wire. Looking back at this, it looks like I put way too much solder mask on. Now we tin up the pads on the new port and try to replace it. For this specifically, I was using 450 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 70% on my Atten hot air station. I don't know how that went, to be honest with you. I was very nervous, very shaky. I've got a new hot air station as well, so I, I think I know what temps to have it at and what air speed, but obviously I've burnt, as you can see, a little bit of plastic over here. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm gonna do a nudge test though and just make sure that the pins are connected on the back side of the port. So let's just do that quickly just to make sure. And as we can see, none of them <laughs> seem to be connected, no! And the port as well, the port's melted here. So this is gonna be horrible to do now. I'm gonna have to go in again and I'm just probably gonna have to go in from underneath and push down as hard as I can because I can't risk melting any more of this plastic because it will short out some of the pins. So I need to be very, very careful here. We go again. This port actually decided it didn't want to exist anymore and flew off into the sunset. So I had to get another port. Even after this charade, the pins were still loose. So I'd done it again, this time from above. I don't think it's gonna work, but <laughs> I've been doing this for hours now. I need to just get on with it and uh, and pray for the best. I'm gonna give the board a good clean first though. Let's just quickly fill in the ground holes. Now I'm gonna put this beautiful device back together. If I'm being honest with you, I, I know it's not gonna work. <laughs> I just, I know because the pins aren't solid and I think what I've done, the mistake I made is with the conformal coating, I put it on a little bit too thickly, even after removing a small bubble after speaking to fill the coder, I still think the thickness wasn't then allowing me to push the port down and hence why it's not getting a good enough connection with the pins. I think that's the reason. Nonetheless, fantastic practice. Really, really enjoyed it. I need to do this sort of stuff to get better. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed. You guys can see how much of a struggle it was though. <laughs> Let's put it back together 
that and test. I put it back together really slowly and I put all of the screws back together uh, <laughs> because I don't know, I'm just prolonging the inevitable, really. Right, here we go. Let's test it. Three, two, one. Nothing on the charger. Let's turn it over. Nothing. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I won't cry, I promise. <laughs> I'm just going to try a different battery just to make sure that it does turn on does it turn on if i put in a charged battery okay so i'm i kind of feel a little bit happy about that so this is this is a battery that actually has charging and it's not turning on oh would help if i had the nand in wouldn't it silly joey now if i put that battery back in is it going to turn on yes it is so there is definitely something wrong with the charging port we tried i failed it's very annoying What's nice is that there's no parental controls on the switch at least. Haha, <laughs> what happens when it's on? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Right, considering it's not broken, I'm going to give it one more try. Wish me luck, here we go. I'm going to apply a little bit of flux. I know this flux doesn't really get to the underneath either, but I don't know, peace of mind. I'm going to go 480 degrees Celsius at 99% airflow speed. Again, I don't think that's done incredibly well, but I will double check now. And I was pushing down so hard on this, I think I might have even bent the board a little bit, to be honest with you. Yeah, you can see <laughs> you can see the ports come out here, like the leg, I think. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, this side definitely looks a little bit raised. Anyway, let's check the pins. Okay, okay, okay. No, see, look, that one's still loose. That one's loose. That one's loose. That one's loose. Unfortunate, I guess. I mean, it's one of those things. I'll test it, but it's not going to work because those pins are way too loose. I just want to see if we get anything when we put this in. I don't have to put all the housing back together and stuff. Yeah, it's still nothing registering. Still completely dead. And again, just one more time for the other side, just to make sure. Yeah, nothing. And I've definitely, I don't think, I don't know if the board's bent or I've bent the charger, but yeah, something's happened. It doesn't work. It was good practice. I'm happy that we gave it you know, the best go that I possibly could. I've spent a very, very long time on this now. I say like seven to eight hours worth of work has gone into this and it's just, yeah, I have failed. <laughs> I need to accept that. I don't know if you can see, but the board is bent upwards. So this side of the board is up a little bit more than the rest of it. So yeah, that, that kind of sucks. I don't know whether I'll revisit this because the board's bent or whether I'll most likely just use it for parts. I have no idea just yet. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry, it's all part of the learning process and I will see you in the next one. Peace.